What is up, people? We are the Speedster Syndicate. The vehicle parked with us right now is the NEO's long-range version. It's a rival to the Tesla Model S or the BMW 7 Series. Along with the impressive horsepower, it also produces, unfortunately for the German users who are used to very exhilarating speeds on the Autobahn. So, look, it goes like Wofta. Speedsters Syndicate. Welcome back to Speedster Syndicate, your go-to place for the latest and most exhilarating driving content. Today we have showed up at NEO headquarters in Cologne, Germany. And I don't think NEO needs much of an introduction because it's a Chinese company which made a mark across the world, especially rivaling itself against Tesla. Uh, as you know, the Tesla is the big fish of the market and this is what they aimed at to cut this fish out and become the big fish themselves. And I would say NEO took a very daring step to come here to Germany and to lodge itself in Germany because Germany have all the legendary car producing company, the automotive industry, like you have the Mercedes, you have BMW. And to come here and to compete with this market, it's a very daring step. But at the same time, it holds a future. The model which we are here to test today is the NEO ET7, which is one of their flagships. It's a rival to the Tesla Model S or the BMW 7 Series. What we have to find out now is, does it actually match up to that reputation or is it just a hoax? So on that note, catch you in the next scene. Welcome back Speedster Syndicate, as we bring you the NEO ET7. There's three versions of this model right now on the German market. The first one being the 75 kilowatt hour battery, the second one with 100 kilowatt hours, and the third one being 150 kilowatt hours. The vehicle parked with us right now is the NEO's long range version, which means that it comes with a 100 kilowatt hour battery, and it gives you up to 580 kilometers of range. This car generates up to 644 horsepower and 480 kilowatt. Along with the impressive horsepower, it also produces 850 newton meters of torque, which means it goes like this from the starting line. It moves from a static position and from 0 to 100 in 3.8 seconds. Unfortunately for the German users who are used to very exhilarating speeds on the Autobahn, this is limited to 200 kilometers only. It can't go beyond. I would believe that it is powerful enough to go beyond, but the computer just restricts it there. On the front of the car, you see these beautiful lights and uh, no grill on the front because obviously it's electric. But I can't help but notice that these lights do resemble the BMW 7 Series a little bit. But honestly, they look better. On the underside, they have halogen lamps, two of those on each end, right and left, as the fog lights. Looking at the sensors, it's got 13 cameras, one and three, 13 cameras all across the body of the car. That This gives you a 360 degree view of the car. Braking system of this car is equipped with a six point Brembo caliper system as well as ventilated brakes. Because of sleek and slippery design, this car has a track coefficient of 0 0.208, which is actually lesser than Tesla. This car comes up with a soft pop-up system. Just you have to place your hand here and it pops up. Same with the closing. When you just place it here, it closes itself. The car is almost around 2.7 meters in length and 1.95 in width. So it's pretty big and it is kind of like a boat. But for a luxury sedan, which has so much space inside and is aimed at providing so much comfort, I think that is pretty valid. Come with me, have a look inside. There's already a lot of legroom, a lot of space for anybody to sit inside this, especially for me. So the infotainment system is 12.3 inches. The speedometer is actually very sleek and small, honestly speaking. 
this could be a slight minus from my side because uh, right now when the steering is turned, I can't really see the uh, speedometer in front of me. Um, so maybe that's something that could be improved. The vents, you don't see blocky vents inside of the car. You, If you see this strip, which also shows the ambient lighting, it stretches all across the dashboard. This is what actually includes the vents and the vents can just be shut from the infotainment system. Everything in this car uh, can be controlled from the infotainment system. So let me show you something on the infotainment system. You want to control your seats. So you just come to this menu, you press here, and here goes the massage. If you want to relax, it can also buzz you off for that. And if it's a hot day and you need some air through your seat, then it provides you with the ventilation that you need. If you come over to this menu, you can control all the airflow. Uh, you can switch back to the back seats and you can control the airflow there as well. Not only that, you want you want your car to smell nice, so you don't have to buy cheap air fresheners. All you have to do is come to this menu, the fragrance menu. Let's go there. And I feel like smelling flowers, so I'll just uh, switch to bloom. And here we go. It's already smelling like flowers. The safety obviously has not been compromised inside of this car. That's why it comes with seven airbags and actually one in the center here as well. If I want to charge my phone, all I have to do is put it here in the center console and it charges wirelessly. Another special thing about the interior is that this is wood called Karun, which is a sustainable material not only does it look really nice in this, matches really well with the with the grey accents, but it's also eco-friendly. The headrests on the front and the back seats change shape in order to make your head more comfortable. Same with the seats, it also has massage features. Which... This car is an absolute luxury. Look at the space it offers. The leg rooms for the passenger, the headroom. There is no bump in the middle, so you have a lot of space. And you, you can see there is an also a USB-C port here and you can have a smaller screen here that you can you know just control the ventilation maybe the music you don't want to bother the driver or the front seat then you can select the temperature you can it's a heated seats the one thing they can improve is the brightness of the screen the screen is a little bit darker for me uh, maybe because i'm wearing the sunglasses either other than that even still it is darker so just have to click it and then you can select the massaging option you can see i can just select the massage on that you can I can just change it to gentle or if you focus on this uh, seat I will just change it into you can you have the ventilated seats you have the heat so pretty much it's a luxurious car the Neo 87 has a boot capacity of 363 liters normally it as compared to other sedan it is kind of you know modest but it's quite reasonable to be very honest you can either open it on with the button on the key or you can just, there's a smaller button here, you can just press it and just wait for it to open. So it do have a practical, like reasonable space inside. We just have to close it, just press the button and wait for it to close. So the taillights on the ET7 comprised of LEDs. The whole strip stretches from one end to the other, kind of like Cayenne vibes, Taycan vibes, you name it. But, if you ask me, it looks very elegant. It looks way much better than a Tesla. You can just open the charging port by just going to the main screen and then open the charge port and it will open. And if you see here, it does have an AC and DC both socket. And when you have to just cl close it, you just press it. So this car costs you around $75,000. Normally, the Neo 87 and the Neo does it, the company itself does not provide a super fast charging. So what, what they came up with, they came up with a battery swap system. So there are Neo powerhouses or Neo battery swap station. You can just go there and swap your older battery with the new one, which is already charged. Now I feel like changing my battery. I want to swap my battery. Just click here see the near, nearest power station, power swap station. We can go to Hilden. We just click it, it shows it has six to six batteries. There's no queue there. It is that much away. So it is till 10 o'clock, it's open. I can even drive now and get it changed. 
I can just click swap and it will show me the route. I can start the route. Hey Nomi. Hello. I want to get my battery swap. Here are our destinations. Which one would you like to go to? I'm already at the station, so I'll just get my battery set. Let's see. Three, four. You can see the 434 kilometer, 91 percent. Yeah, that's good. Ah, yeah. Let's see the battery health. If you click here, no, it's again say the charging resources. But if you click the battery, now let's see, it's 90 percent. Actually, you can change this bar and see how much your battery can be charged. And when you get it, you normally get a 90% charge, new battery. And you can see the 90% battery is remaining 527 uh, kilometer. You have the range of WLTP range. And there's one point I have to mention about the charging of the car. For example, you are getting your battery swapped and you might be thinking that when I'm getting my battery swapped, this car the battery which I am going to give out is like healthier and I'm not sure which kind of a battery I'm getting in my car. So this is a point when every user of the electric car will think that I have taken care of my battery while driving. I, I keep the life cycle thing in check but now I don't know which kind of a battery I will get at the end of the day. But from the new swap station it is a guarantee of that company that they will give you a, a battery which is already in good health. They have particular standards and if the battery doesn't come up to that standards, they will just discard it. So whenever you will get the battery from the new power station, it will be in good shape, in good health. So you don't have to take tension. When you are getting this car from the Neo, you can have two options. Either you can buy your own battery or the other option is you can get a subscription model. And I think the subscription model is better than getting your own uh, getting your own battery because Neo is offering you this battery swap. So look, it goes like wofta. 200 kilometer now it's stopped it's not going ahead it's been blocked so yeah okay let's do 0 to 100 okay 0 to 60 check so So this is, we are at 200 already. So let me show you how the auto parking work. I'm at the parking place, you can see there. And there is, I have to see, and I have to let the car decide where to park. So I will just click on this button. I am starting it. to find a parking spot. Okay, so press the find. I have to select this place. Please watch yeah. out. I'm starting to park. Okay. Now it's parking out itself. Yeah, you can see it found the place. Now it's parking out. It parked, I parked the car. So, look, that's how the parking is done. So again, an eventful day, not day, actually an eventful weekend because we had this car for almost two, 
no, Saturday to Monday, so three days. And we drove it as much as we could. We drove it pretty much across the whole NRA state. We did some speed tests. We did, did 0 to 100. We did 0 to 200. This car definitely gets uh, an A-plus from me when it comes to being a luxury sedan, when it comes to providing comfort, and when it comes especially to being better than a Tesla. At the end of the video, I would like to thank Neo Germany for providing us this opportunity to drive this car. And if you like fast cars, if you like supercar, hypercars, luxury cars, classic cars, Speedster Syndicate is the place to be. So like, share, subscribe. And catch you in the next episode.